and welcome from the ACT 2017 in Berlin. I'm Christina from WeConnect and I'm really happy to be with Dr. Peter Flaps from BMW. Peter, welcome to the conference and thank you so much for your time to participate in that interview. As a start, could you just introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about your professional background? I work for the BMW Group, but for a very uh, special team inside BMW, um, for the Institute for Mobility Research. We are part of the strategy department of BMW, mm -hmm. but I would say the good thing is that we are not involved in daily politics. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do independent research and we are, the main questions we are dealing with is um, why do people travel? Um, how much do people travel and which mode of transport do they use? So we're not only um, talking about cars, but um, we discuss mobility um, at, at a whole. And you'll also be moderating a Sensor Peer Roundtable later on this afternoon on brand identity and vehicle automation. Um, what insights are you hoping to get from the delegates? There is a lot of uh, things going on in the uh, transport system, especially um, in context of autonomous driving. And um, as BMW is a very strong brand, mm -hmm. um, we do ask ourselves um, what happens um, to our brand uh, values um, if we have autonomous driving. Because today we are very known for you know sportiness. Uh, people like to drive, so. Um, it's really very interesting to consider uh, those autonomous driving context of uh, brand identity. I hope to get some uh, questions from the people here, which I can bring back to the to the experts at BMW who are dealing with that person. And then further discuss it internally, of course, yeah. right? And you'll also be presenting a case study um, later on this afternoon. And uh, will robotaxis turn our mobility systems upside down? Interesting question. Tell us a bit more about that case study. It is really interesting and you know for many many years now there is a growing number of people, consultants, companies, experts who um, say that there is, uh, you know, there is a transition phase going on um, in, inside the automotive industry from being a, um, a car manufacturer in the direction of being a mobility service provider. Um, they, there is also a growing number of people who say that especially autonomous vehicles will really drive that change and there is a um, also a growing number of people who say that our typical business model will change completely. There are some people who even say that we will not sell any cars anymore. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of um, believing, it's very complex, so that's why we also try to um, cover that question in our research. So we ask ourselves from a mobility research perspective, if we have autonomous vehicles level 4 and 5 available on the market, what would happen to the mobility behavior of, of people? Would they drive more? Uh, would they use the car more often? Um, and uh, to give you a short answer, yes, we do believe, but it's not like that, they, that we believe that people will drive twice as much. Or that, um, yeah, there is an effect, uh, but it's, it's maybe it's not as big as some people think. And uh, what we also think is, yes, if that uh, technology is available, it would give mobility on demand systems. Um, th these systems will get more attractive. There will be more um, supply. The demand will be higher because of different reasons. Um, the first is, if you have an autonomous vehicle, you don't need a driving license. So more people could use it. Um, it's like a taxi, of course. Um, but the, the price would also be cheaper than a taxi because no one is driving. Um, very important, the access and the egress times uh, will decrease. So uh, the car comes to you and very important, you don't have to park it. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, uh, it's, for some people, it's important to do something different while driving. Um, so these are reasons um, in combination why um, that, that simulations reveal that um, autonomous vehicles um, will increase the number of trips and also the distances um, we, we, we drive in the future. How do you think will mobility on demand systems actually or potentially be pushed by self-driving vehicles, not only in Germany but only in the US and not now but in 2035? This is something I also take away from this conference here. So yeah. some years ago also the, um, the forecast we made in our research uh, two years ago, the, um, the S-curves we typically built for those market penetration mm -hmm they were uh, more optimistic than the curves I've seen today. So um, what a lot of people realize is that it might not be as fast as some people had thought some years ago, the introduction. So today we had numbers like uh, mass introduction, not for level four and level five, not before 20 to 2030. Um, so, so 
you know, this, this, is, this is a process um, that is going on. There is a hype of a technology uh, with uh, autonomous vehicles. I believe that we have reached that hype and now it goes down a little bit. This doesn't mean that this technology will have a great impact. I'm pretty sure about that. It just means that maybe it will not be as fast as some people have um, thought before. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. It's much appreciated. And then just enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.